This video will be a very personal and private look into my wife's and mine 2016 preparedness items. September is Emergency Preparedness Month in the United States of America, so we like to sit down and go over our preps. I will include this list below this video so you can alter it however you like, but this will give you an idea of what we feel that we need to look at for items that we don't already have or for things that we need to restock or reevaluate. I won't go through all of these items because it would take too long. I think you will be surprised as we are at how many items there are on this list. But let me just highlight a few of these to give you an idea of what we're thinking. We do store gas. We usually rotate it once a year. Now is the time to do that. I like to buy gas in the winter because it's less expensive. I typically save the gas for 12 months. So I would encourage you to get some stay bill. You can get that on Amazon. I'll have a link below for that. And uh, it will stabilize your gasoline so it's still good in a year. We do have propane stoves. Uh, I highly recommend the Coleman propane stove for emergency cooking and it's great for family campouts. Uh, we have kerosene heaters for light and cooking and warmth. Uh, butane stoves, very expensive fuel wise but uh, you can use it inside the house safely because it doesn't put off toxic fumes. Out of those three items there, the butane is the only one that you can use in the house. I do recommend that for that situation. So take a look at this butane stove you can get on Amazon and the butane canisters. They won't last you long, but they will work great in a pinch. I'd get a, a pack of 12 or 24 or more if you're going to have a butane stove at all. We've lent out our butane stove to my daughter Rachel. So on our list is get back the stuff we've lent out. So if you've lent out things, make sure you get them back so you have them back on your property so when something happens, you know exactly where it is. Joel Skousen is somebody who has been in the preparedness industry for decades. He has helped people build safe rooms and safe homes. I highly recommend his books. You can get them on Amazon. Again, I'll have a link below this video. We have all of Joel Skousen's books. I actually have a, a couple of recordings from him. I'll also link below this video so you can listen to uh, his presentations on preparedness and what he thinks is truly going on and will go on here in the United States and around the world. But uh, I recommend getting his books. We've just finished going through his high security shelter book. And so we were designing and building a safe room in case of earthquake or nuclear fallout or whatever may happen, we have a safe place to go. We also really enjoyed his book, Strategic Relocation. We spent a lot of time reading and studying and evaluating that. And then we just followed our hearts or the promptings that we felt that where we should be moving. That's why we live up here in Idaho Falls, Idaho. Security items, yes, we do have handguns. We all carry, we are all very, very well trained. We all practice uh, almost on a daily basis. We do more dry practice than anything else. I highly recommend that. It saves on ammunition, but we still do shoot at the range. And since we're out here in the county, we can shoot out here on the property. So we need to check our ammunition and restock that. Uh, usually the best pricing is online and at no particular place, but uh, you might check online pricing. I just did buy my precision rifle, as you can see here. This will help us in uh, hunting for food with high reliability and precision. So I like this particular caliber. We'll be getting the associated scopes and so forth, bipod for the front of the rifle, monopod for the back and so forth. Uh, not on this list, but I also did buy a spotting scope yesterday. We do have an updated security system that I'll be installing. You can go with a wired or a wireless system. Either work great. I also really like this perimeter security system. It is very helpful for two-legged and four-legged visitors and lets you know where they are on the property. We do have some personal items you'll notice on the list. This kind of to-do list, like my wife wants to finish the basement. So that's on the list to get things done. I'm a real believer in having your supply of food, at least. And I'm also a real believer in growing your own food. We have found that by supplementing our year supply of food with fresh produce from our garden makes a huge difference in how good the food tastes 
and really makes the stored food go much, much further. So some things I need for my area would be some additional gypsum, magnesium sulfate. Uh, we do keep five-year supply of micronutrients that I purchased from mintlatigarding.com in stock. So I have everything that I need to uh, grow food, whether I'm in the mountains, uh, long-term camping, or whether I'm here at my house uh, gardening. The entire gardening method with the Midlatter Gardening Method is completely portable. I like that. It's interesting, my wife added two-way hose on here. We both have our own two-way hose, but I guess she plans on other people being here and they needing a two-way hose for weeding too. I would get the micronutrients and the two-way hose and, of course, the Midlatter Gardening Course book at midlattergardening.com. But one thing that we really considered in our preparations is making sure that we have hand tools which is the next section and you can see we have several things here we're anticipating if there's an EMP that there will not be electricity even though personally we have a complete solar panel system with battery backup and additional inverters and charge controllers in EMP bags you know if uh, things go bad and there's an EMP or the power goes down or whatever happens we don't have electricity it's important to have good old-fashioned hand tools and so you can see we have several tools here listed and we'll make sure that we have all of those here including nails and screws and other things that we typically just drive down and get a five pound box of nails and screws from Home Depot but that may not be possible it seems like in any emergency whether it's flood hurricanes tornadoes whatever the first thing to go from uh, stores are batteries and water we always want to make sure that we have at least four or five packs of batteries especially with the double A's because we use them so much in our ham radios and in our security equipment like the perimeter alarms and so forth. There are some great solar light bulbs. You need to make sure that these are also in EMP bags because they are electronic. They use LEDs, but you can get them on Amazon. I'd get the EMP bags from empbags.com. That's my son's business. He owns that and has military spec EMP bags. We trust all of our electronics to those bags. I would encourage you to put all of your electronics inside of the EMP bags if you're concerned about an electrical or magnetic pulse either from a nuclear explosion or from a coronal mass ejection from the sun. Because we want to protect from any kind of surges. We want additional fuses for our fuse box lightning arresters for the fuse box and also for the solar panels in addition to the ones that we already have up and a nice 50 foot roll of Romex wire. After going through our list of electronics here in the house we realize that we actually need to go buy more EMP bags for my son so we'll be going to doing the same thing that you do we buy them we do get a family discount but we you know we do still have to pay my son for them but uh, what I do is I I actually double bag everything it's called nesting I'll have a small bag like you see here with my ham radios and their wall chargers and so forth in it. Then I'll put it in the large, extra large bag where I will have several smaller bags in. And that gives me EMP proof and super EMP protection and allows me to simply grab one bag and pull it out. For example, we have our genealogy backed up. We've got our family photos backed up. We've got old computers, old cell phones, ham radios, all those kind of electronic things backed up including LED light bulbs for the house because LED is electronics and will not work after an EMP. I do have a surplus military tent which takes a lot of stakes so I need to buy those stakes. We need to get a wood burning stove for that. I'm not sure why my wife has down the, the plywood and the clear plastic. We would certainly use the, the clear plastic to make a clean room to isolate somebody if they're sick and also to seal windows if there is a pandemic or any kind of nuclear fallout that we're concerned about. You notice duct tape is not on this list because we have lots of duct tape. If you think of preparedness as going on a long-term camp out, then you kind of get those things. And this is what we have in this list in the camping and food prep. I do really like these fire extinguishers. They're very compact. They uh, work extremely well. They work great if someone's on fire because it immediately removes the heat from the person's skin to minimize burning. But we also will be getting larger fire extinguishers because I think we need both. We carry these smaller fire extinguishers in all our vehicles. We have these small fire extinguishers in our kitchens and in our offices and our bedrooms. 
Our military tent, I think, is about a thousand pounds. If we try to put that in any kind of long-term provisions inside the back of the pickup, we are going to run out of room. So we do need to get a trailer and then add a trailer hitch to our existing Dodge truck or get a diesel truck and convert it to veggie so we can run on veggie when uh, gasoline and diesel may not be available. We'll also be buying a motorcycle or ATV. I need to discuss that with my neighbors. I see them using both of those. We'll find out what's more practical. Uh, they both have advantages and disadvantages, so that's on our list. Again, my wife's to-do list is popping up on here. I don't know why paint powder room and powder room baseboards is on here. It's sort of like you make the beds before you flee when there's a fire coming. I don't know, but anyway, it looks like she's kind of stuffing the to-do list here for me, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. If you've seen my water purification facts and myth video, you know that I'm a big proponent of using pool shock because that is a stable, long-term way to store chlorine. And so we need to buy some more of that. And we have some other items that we need to get on here. Uh, we do have a Berkey. We have four Berkey black elements. We're getting more black elements. If you don't know, I am an authorized dealer for Berkey. I do have substantial discounts that I'm passing along to you because I don't do that as a full-time business. I'm just trying to help people not die from tainted water after an earthquake, after a flood, after whatever the situation may be. So if you are interested in getting the world's best water treatment and purification system, please simply email me, david at ldsprepper.com with the words Berkey, discount pricing in the subject line. I would be glad to email you the discounted pricing. I can't post them here because of the agreement I have with Berkey. They're too low to advertise online. Toilet paper, yes, it's a luxury item, but boy, what a nice luxury it is. My wife figured that we would need 53 rolls per person per year. Decide how many rolls you need for your family, but definitely have it on hand. In case for some reason we don't have a way to flush toilets, even though we are on septic, uh, we want to find out the best ways to dig an outhouse. And if a bunch of people show up here to camp out, we'll have shovels and uh, instructions for them to dig their own latrines and build an outhouse. Sanitation really, 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 really is a top priority in preparedness. I think it's often overlooked, but very, very important. So pool shock for sanitation, for cleaning our hands, for drinking water, uh, soap and water. We've got lots of uh, soaps on hand. My wife makes her own soaps. So having fly swatters, yeah, there'll be flies around. Medical is also a big part of preparedness. Uh, we have several things already on hand, but as you can see, we have several things that we need to reevaluate and put together. So make sure you've gone over that list with your loved ones and that you're prepared for an EMP. Make sure that you're prepared for a pandemic or that you're prepared if there's not a doctor available and get the training, get the experience and have the materials on hand for medical emergencies. Of course, you'll want to be, be able to clean your clothes, your house, repair clothing, those kind of things. So household supplies is very important to have on the list. I have the, all the materials to make my own foam clothing. It's actually underclothing to help retain your body heat, but allowing moisture to go through. My wife has a complete set, so she's taken care of. But on my end, I decided to save some money and have the experience to make it myself. So I bought all the materials. I may actually end up just hiring somebody to make the foam clothing for me because I simply don't have the time to do it. I've got lots of boots, but my wife needs boots and inserts and make sure that we have our hygiene and, and uh, other supplies ready. A very large part of being prepared is being mentally prepared. Having some distractions, some fun is very important in the preparations. My wife plays the guitar, she plays the piano. I'm a really bad singer. We can have lots of fun doing that, having games on hand and uh, craft things could be a great relief. I was at a preparedness meeting and someone mentioned that we should really have a 24 hour bug out list and a one hour bug out list. I thought that was great because if you've got 60 minutes to bug out, you're going to be grabbing a whole lot less than you are if you have 24 hours to bug out. That may be because there's a flood coming, dam break, something like that. You may have 24 hours to get out of town or you may have one hour. So having those lists and those items put aside beforehand, prioritized, you know where they are, they're already packaged, you know which ones to take, which ones to leave, 
could really make a huge difference in how well you are applied when you have to get out of Dodge. I should probably explain why we're getting 55 gallons of grain alcohol. Not because we're a bunch of uh, heavy drinkers over here in our household, but my wife is a certified master herbalist, and so these are simply supplies that she needs to make her tinctures and extracts so that we have those on hand. We really feel that essential oils and natural health remedy items are part of our long-term and daily preparedness lists. In the back of a couple of Joel Skelton's books, he has a very good list of bartering items. So my wife kind of compiled what she thought would be good to have on hand. You may want to consider what you want to have on hand. I don't really think that we're going to be buying coffee, tobacco, and cigarettes and alcohol. Certainly we'll have chocolate. I don't know if I'm going to be bartering with that. But anyway, I'm not a doctor. I'm not a welder. I don't have the equipment for either of those. So there are some things that we realize that we don't have or the skills we don't have and we'll need to barter with those. I think food is going to be the top bartering item. So want to make sure that we have everything we need in food storage and for food production. I haven't counted up how many items there are on this list. I got a feeling there's probably close to a hundred. Just in case that isn't enough, my wife added some extra lines down here so we could add more things to our list. You know, preparedness is a lifestyle. It's not a once and done thing. We've been preparing for whatever might happen for a long time. And we're just kind of filling in the cracks and just making sure that we have things that we feel they need to have on hand. Hopefully this video has given you an idea of, hey, something might happen. There might be an earthquake. Just ask Haiti. There may be a flood. There may be fires. There may be tornadoes. I may lose my job. There are a lot of things that could happen to you. A preparedness-minded person drives a car that's well-maintained and has a spare tire in it. A preparedness person has a fire extinguisher in the kitchen and not over the stove. A preparedness-minded person is really just a practical person who's thought of maybe possible scenarios that might happen in their lives in the future and has taken steps to be ready for them. That's really all it is. And when you are prepared, you're really more at peace. It's a very peaceful way to live. Versus not being prepared and always being antsy. I know I should be doing this, but I really want to go on this trip. Or I really should have these things, but I really want to buy this new car. That's living in turmoil constantly. That'll give you more stress than anything else. That's not a healthy way to live. Now on this list, this is just stuff. I think it's important stuff, stuff that we need or want to have on hand. This is looking at preparedness under a microscope. If we stand back and look at my preparedness philosophy, I go by the three G's. God, grub, and guns. In that order. It will not make a bit of difference how many bullets you have or how many cans of beans you have if you're not right with your God. So whatever your faith is, take the steps to be right so you're at peace with that. If I had to narrow it down to just one thing out of all this list, my most important prep, it's very simple. No question. It's the ability to filter and purify water. Number one importance on my list. That's why when you come to my YouTube channel, the first video that plays is my comparison of the Berkey water treatment system against all other systems. It's the only one that we use and recommend. Again, if you want that discount of pricing, just send me an email and I'll be glad to send that to you. This is LDS Prepper reminding you, if ye are prepared, you shall not fear.